Listen. Boy, girl, boy, girl. Listen. Yeah, hey, we're out. live. So, yeah, let's do the intro. Everybody, welcome to another live edition of Queen Bee. We are celebrating World Doula Week, and this is an awesome opportunity, y'all, because we are here live in Montgomery, Alabama. Typically, you see lots of faces on the screen, but today we're going to have real live conversations with real live experts, doulas, mommies, folks who are helping Black women, especially Black women, live strong have great healthy pregnancies and our first guest listen because this is a in-person event we are live at the library here in montgomery and so as folks come in and out you're going to see lots of different faces we're going to talk about lots of different experiences so if you have questions y'all tell a friend to tell a friend yes start tagging people honey get them into this video because if you have questions about pregnancy and what a doula is we're going to talk about all of that right right here live on queen b hey love see i told you it was live <laughs> so what's your name look because we just met yes yes, yes. <laughs> literally yes. i'm sarai sarai and, you and this are, is david yes he is going to slay giants, y'all. He is six months he old. Is. And he is an absolutely amazing he baby. He came here to be a king, and he's yes. proven it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, doulas. We're celebrating World Doula Week. Mm -hmm. What in the world is a doula? A doula. So, from your perspective. From my perspective. Yes. So, I'm actually a mother of five. And throughout my experiences with having children, having children without support because of my living situations or where I was at and everything. A doula to me is the, she's not your mother. She's not your sister. She's not like your, your homegirl, but at the same time, they can, she encompasses all that in oh, wow. one. Okay. You know, because okay. she can be the mother that you need in that hour, in that moment. She could be the friend to be like, look, girl, no, that's not going to work in this pregnancy. She can be the mama like, look, you need to do this. You need to do that. Here for that advice. Somebody to call at two o'clock in the morning crying like, I don't understand. Help me. She can be that friend that you just need somebody to just just talk to or just help you just help help me understand show me show me the way that's what a doula is to me okay. that's how i view working as a doula being as a doula i want to be i just want to be that comfort person that you could just come to for anything medical medical support just emotional support physical support any any avenue any because each pregnancy each mother needs something different so i tailor what i do to that mother and what she need in that time in that moment now see what you just said is so important is that each mother needs something different mm -hmm. so having a doula support a child or, or support the pregnancy right um can be really critical it can really be life or death because pregnancy mm -hmm. can be super stressful i don't yes. know how many mommies are watching yes. um or people who've experienced pregnancy um but it can be super stressful so what are some of the um greatest challenges um that you've experienced as a doula that you that you are confident that had that mother not had you there the outcome could have been a lot different her experience would have been a lot different. In my experience so far, most of the mothers I've worked with, mm -hmm. they were first time mothers. Okay. So it's the shock of, oh, this is what's happening. Like in that hour, in that moment when you're delivering, they were like, I did not know it was like this. Cause it's the, people can tell you, you know, you're gonna know what to expect. You're gonna know what to expect when, you go into labor or when it's time to deliver, when that baby is crowning, when you going from early labor to active labor to transition and everything like that. They say, oh, you're gonna know, it's gonna be okay. You're gonna, but in that moment, 
you could see in the mother's eyes, like yeah. they eyes just set back, like I did not know this is going on. And that's when you have to really come in and you have to they it's like they they reach they get into a tunnel and you got to get into that tunnel with them and be like hey it's okay yes. I'm here come with me you know just focus on me focus on my voice everything is gonna be all right I'm here with you we're gonna take it one step at a time that, that is what I've seen so far in my experience so now when you're in in the delivery suite like or do you also do um home births mm -hmm. do you also deliver like is that I have, I have not. Okay, I would say because that's not delivered, right? In a sense, because yeah. the midwife did show up, yes. but she didn't have her assist, so I oh, ended wow. up becoming her assist, and okay. I enjoy that. Okay, because I okay. I want to get deep down in there, like I'm yeah. trying to do everything. Yeah, you know, okay. I want to know. I want to like I'm. I want to be there for everything. All of it. I love it. I enjoy it. I enjoy everything about birth, pregnancy, motherhood, just womanhood in general, from baby all the way up to elderly age. Okay. Like I enjoy it all. So I okay. have, in a sense, kind of delivered ish. Yeah. Yeah. You, so you've been there. Yeah. You've been, been there. there. So mommy's in the hospital versus mommy's at home. Um, what's been your understanding of their experience? Does it matter truly? Have you been able to tell whether it's... I can say at home mothers feel more comfortable? Okay, they even though you know they may be going through whatever they're going through in the moment through their pregnancy delivery, but they overall they feel more comfortable at home because you don't have those doctors or those nurses that you feel because of their position of authority. Yeah, you feel like okay. you're bound to do what they have to say or consider what they have. To say. Yeah, you do in a sense, depending on the circumstance. Mm -hmm. But mothers feel like they have more of a choice when they're at home that works. versus when in there in the choice. hospital but you know what even though we're in the hospital there is a level of choice it is and i think that doulas really can help and i know adelia she'll be coming up mm -hmm. but um she was on a panel during our live event held at the bridge cross in jubilee and talked about you know the level of igniting the the, the power within mm -hmm. the woman mm -hmm. right during pregnancy mm -hmm. and giving language mm -hmm. To help mommies navigate, you Big know, time. the medical circle and helping to even make a more sound decision. Big right? time. Because that is, like you said, the language, for yeah. instance. That is a huge thing because a lot of times mothers will go in and they'll hear all these big words. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of confused over these big words on top of their emotions and everything that else is going on. And then they just give up. But when you empower them with understanding prior to that time, they can go in there with more confidence and they can understand, okay, this is what you're talking about when you use these this type of language, these type of words, and everything's moving like this. Now I feel I feel more at ease. Okay. You know. So when do I consult with a doula? Like I'm say if I'm looking, do I do I come find a doula of my choice? Um is there a directory of you? I know that this is a this is a great opportunity to see women who are truly a part of the doula movement, if you will, in, in the black belt. But where do I and when do I? What's the timeline? When do you suggest folks start looking for um it all, it all depends on what the mother wants. There, there are doulas that can work with mothers during while they're they're trying to conceive. There are oh wow! You can get a doula even you know after just for postpartum. You can get one. You can get one when you're trying to conceive. You can have, you can be like, look, I'm having a birth. I'm literally about to deliver in like two days. Can you be my doula? Oh and wow! You can get it now. That does when you when you do reach those circumstances, you are looking at the fact that the bond that you have built with that doula may be short. Okay. But still, the, if you if y'all talk with each other, you should be able as the mother and as the doula, y'all both should be able to kind of feel each other's vibe and be like, okay, you know, we can work together, we can do this together. And then even as a doula, even if you can't necessarily feel the mother, because you, you mm -hmm. understand that it's a lot going on. Everybody got different situations. So we know overall this is why we're here to be your support and to be your backbone when you at your weakest point yeah. that you don't even realize is going to be your weakest point until it actually happens. Okay, so last question. Um, 
Because I know, David, you want to get to the snacks. Look. Uh-huh. <laughs> Last question. Um, when you compare the importance of a doula for a woman who may say let's ha- have a support system of a husband or a partner um may have a support system of grandparents um may have a support system of parents church whoever versus someone who doesn't necessarily have that same network or that same um security blanket if you will community, that same village mm-hmm. um what difference can that make in the life of a single mom a huge one it really can it really makes a huge difference because it, it relieves her from the possibility of having to do this alone yeah because she you got a lot to worry about when you're pregnant and when you deliver and from the time of pregnancy forward yeah through the rest of that child's life and yours. Listen, okay, you come worry. on, let's talk about the next 18 years. <laughs> plus that, right. to be totally honest, yeah. plus that, it's just the worries just change, but it does make a big difference for a single mother versus a mother who has support system, if it's husband, boyfriend, baby daddy, uncle, auntie, cousin, grandma, whoever. It really does make a big difference. And I, she needs to do more than... I, I don't want to say more than, but she equally needs a doula for her situation versus a doula being there for a family. The whole family. Even okay. Sometimes a doula can come in and she she may feel like she needs to be there for the mother, but she probably needs to be there for the father. Okay. Because fathers need doulas too, and they don't realize that. Oh, wow. They need them. Okay. Because they're stepping into a realm that they have no idea that they're about to step into when it comes to fatherhood. And grandparents need doulas. Whoever is going to be the circle or the tribe for that child, yeah. everybody needs that doula. Okay. And everybody needs to be involved because it's a team effort. Absolutely. So now, if I want to choose you as my doula or I want to learn more, how do I get in touch with you? Uh, you can reach me mainly Instagram or Facebook. Okay. And you'll find me as Doula Sarai or Sarai Doula. And Either I am way. going to put the information. You can follow her and spell S A R A I. All right, on Instagram and Facebook. All right. Listen, we um we do have a question in the chat, but I am going to ask our next doula that question if you all don't mind. Okay. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for having a seat yeah, with us, no Sarah time, and baby. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, y'all. Absolutely. So, y'all, again, we are here sharing information with you. We're here live at Meet the Doulas in Montgomery, Alabama at the Rufus Branch of the Montgomery Public Library System. And we are super excited to bring this live information to you. Um, Sarai is a doula. She has some amazing um, services that she can offer to individuals and families, as do um, all of our guests tonight. And she, you can find her on Instagram and on Facebook. So now, let me get another one of our crystal. You want to come talk, <laughs> Now this, she, she is no unfamiliar face to you all who are just now tuning in. Crystal Nelson is amazing asset to our community. She is the coordinator for a very special project based here in Montgomery, but serving Montgomery and Dallas counties. Um, And it is called She Looks Like Me. And I wonder why she looks like me. (laughs) You know why she looks like me. You already know. So, Crystal, how have things been with you? Things have been amazing. Just, you know, taking it day by day, doing what we do and trying to educate the community on this HIV world. Absolutely. So now (laughs) She Looks Like Me is an HIV prevention initiative. Um, again, based in Montgomery, but serving Montgomery. Are you all doing lounge as well? 
in yes. Dallas. Okay. We're, we're work, this is our first year, and so as we learn everything, we're trying to branch out and do um, Montgomery, Macon, Lowndes, and um, Dallas. Dallas. Okay, yes. awesome. Yes. So four counties across the Black Belt, y'all, this is an awesome opportunity for us to learn more and to join together because both of our initiatives, both She's Ready and She Looks Like mm -hmm. Me, literally are focusing on Black women. Yeah. Um, these are projects that are funded by the Department of Public Health. So big shout out to yeah. Alabama Department of Public yes. Health and the Ending the HIV Epidemic um, Initiative. So now want to learn more about She Looks Like Me. And I know that you all have an event coming up. We do. Let's plug it. Let's we do. <laughs> so we do. Where does She Looks Like Me come from? Um, you know, when we were presented with this opportunity, um, let me just rewind it back. You know, I'm part of a nursing sorority as well, yes. um, prior to five. Yes. And we were gearing up to be approved for, you know, to start training for testing for HIV. Okay. And so I was very excited behind that, got the sorority geared up for that. And then um, COVID happened. Yeah. And so everything literally shut down. I know that was like two years ago. But then um, Pastor Lover came to me and said, hey, there's this grant um, that somebody wants us to apply for. And so the spark was mm -hmm. reignited. Okay. And, um, you know, we were able to pull together some things that we really want to work on for the community. And the fact that it was coming from the church, um, kind of being non judgmental. Um, speaking to the women, um, St. Paul is the home church of Rose Parks. We have our first female pastor there. And so what better way um, to kind of live out the legacy of being able to speak for those that, you know, that can always speak for themselves. And so that's how it came to be. She looks like me, because when we look at the world, we think about the different traumas, experiences, circumstances, um, we all have some of those same things, maybe not facing them in the same manner, but we can all say that I feel you, girl. I yeah. got you. And so she looks like me. And that's where that, that came from. So, And, you know, that's, that is such a powerful phrase mm -hmm. because what... I hope when I hear that, yeah, is that because she looks like me, I won't harm her. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. She looks like me. We, yeah. we have a connection. We're connected. Right. And so some of the things about our program, um, we are excited about the testing um, portion, being approved to be able to do that. So, um, you know, just kind of working through those kinks, getting that started. Um, also, being able to connect people to the right people, the right places. And when you think about um, assisting people and getting to the root cause of why, why are we really not accountable for right. our health? And I'm not trying to put the blame on anybody, but there's, it goes, we can go a little bit deeper. And so we do have a social worker on hand that can be able to assist us in those areas and make those recommendations. We don't want you to have to worry about if you're going to have something to eat versus do, do I need to care about if I am, if I'm not at risk, but do I need to care? I can't care about this when I don't have a place to put my head, right. you know? Yeah. And so we want to be able to deal with that. We want to be able to deal with trauma, social issues, social determinants, <laughs> what, what puts people off. Yeah. And then also um, the stigma, like very, we have individuals that are very passionate about the different things that we are trying to accomplish. And stigma definitely is at the top, just making people realize that, um, that how much that it really influences you to making about making decisions about your health mm -hmm. and that you don't even realize that hey this is stigma let's start talking about the conversation and the more that you're hearing it and i know people don't want to necessarily talk about hiv you know it's not popular mm -hmm. um but the more that they hear it the more they get used to it i think that we are able to tear down those walls and and address the stigma and so we're going into your 
neighborhood. So we're hopefully to get up, start canvassing. Uh, we want to go into your professional settings. We want to be able to go into your community. Like we want to be have a presence, and so that's what we're. That's what our desire is, and we have a, a team that's very passionate about our mission. Yes. So. <laughs> and you all have poured that passion into a very special event that's coming up that at is. April. I'm, look, I'm telling you, yes. I'm excited. Yes. So um, it's called "She Looks Like Me." We're calling it a she treat. All right. So it's for our ladies all ages 18 and up we want to be able to hit a, a wide um, range of individuals that will um that will be able to get some some healing so that we can yeah. focus on our health and so we're gonna you know that friday night is april the 29th with the first day um we'll have individuals coming in probably around two to check in mm -hmm. it is a overnight stay i'm um, gonna be at the alabama 4-h center that's in columbiana oh, yes. it's a really nice um facility and really nice grounds and so when you come in we want you guys to kind of already be thinking about some things that you just want to re really release because we're going to work on that and then um we're going to have a good time we're going to have a comedian come in that's already been secured so friday night we're going to have a good time it's not going to be stuffy it says saint paul and me and i know how y'all like to do ame churches but no um <laughs> but um so it's going to be the comedian. Then we have a DJ that's selected. Okay. And we're going to hit air, every era, okay. every generation. So we want you to lay your head down. And it's going to be a pajama jam. So all the girls come in your pajamas. It's a slumber party. Come all. on now. You yes. better get on Etsy now and find your PJs. Look, I'm girl, trying to find girl something. Girl crew. I'm trying to find something. And so Saturday, you know, we pretty much have things secure. But we're going between um, maybe like um, a prayer walk. Definitely going to do a prayer wow. walk. And it's going to be led um, um, by a powerful um, pastor. Um, then we're trying to just debate if we want to just have an intimate moment where there may be a bonfire and those things that we want you to release kind of put them in a bonfire yeah. or there's an amazing chapel there yeah. that we're thinking about maybe we want it to be something like a moment um and then we have some workshops that are coming up the um overcoming depression okay with god yeah and then we have um c anderson Okay. Um, I don't know if you've heard of her, but she's going to be speaking to um, trauma and kind of like stigma and, and addressing those generational things that take place oh, wow. and kind of speak to healing. Okay. And then um, we will be premiering. This is all at the all She Treat. At the She Treat, baby. She Treat is locked and loaded, baby. Listen. Ooh, and then we do, <laughs> we do have our. Um, I, I premiere of our documentary. It's only okay. about 30 minutes. Okay. So we, we have a, a person that's going to give their testimony within that, that um, documentary. And um, we're going to end with worship because that's what we do. Yeah. You know, we're going to end with a praise and worship and a and a message. We had you pour out, but then we're going to fill you back up before yeah. you leave. Yeah. And I forgot to mention, we're going to feed y'all. You eat twice on Friday and you eat twice on um, Saturday. Okay. So you can't beat that in your lodging. Yeah. And the prices are so, when I say reasonable, really, um, like if you're staying by yourself, you don't want to roommate, the max price is $200. All you of wait, that you said the two, max the price. Max. If you want to stay in a room by yourself, that's two hundred dollars. If you want to stay with a roommate, that's one sixty. Okay. And then if you want to stay with three to four, that's one forty. Wow. And if you can't stay overnight and you just want to do the day right, um, then that's sixty dollars. If you just oh, want to wow. come on Saturday. Saturday. Okay. Yeah. I think that's very um, it's lodging. Right. Four meals. A comedian and a DJ. Absolutely. Um, ladies, <laughs> how do you register? Let's let's share um, it because um, this leader is so amazing. She put us on drop form. I'm not gonna even lie. So, <laughs> so we are I'm using the drop form, and I'm gonna send it to her okay. so that you guys will know how. Yes, to I'm going to drop the link when she emails it to me. I'm dropping it right in the chat. Yes, so if you are watching this video. And you better not be watching it after the she treat is over with because if it's made when you turn around and watch this yeah. you're gonna be very disappointed because the she treat is going, going to be down. a magical magical experience a beautiful opportunity for women yes. to get together for women 18 and up 18 right? and up 18 listen and, up. and, and we only 200? have so many um slots so you okay gotta yeah gotta get in listen and it's 200 dollars 
Y'all, we spend more than $200 on a pair of shoes. Stop playing. We're trying to get y'all free. And two hundred is is your piece not worth $200? <laughs> Come on now. Click the link. Listen, I'm going to put it right over here in this um in this chat. Let's see. And I am going to, um yes, here we, wait. Did I wait, send it? Wait, no. Look. If not, I can oh, send this it to your, um, Wait a minute, that's you. Come on okay. here. Copy you. link address. Look, I learned from here. every experience. Huh? Listen here. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. There you go. Click on the link in the chat. Register now to participate in the She Tree you know April and 29th and 30th. It. It's Friday and Saturday. If you have never been to the 4-H Center, it is a wonderful outdoor experience. There are canoes. There um, They have a... Um, a riverboat is a great opportunity to experience relief oh, yes. and release. Yes, a beautiful lake. Yes. We're going to let y'all get used to the grounds, walk yes. around. Yes. You know, if you have children like myself, mm -hmm. this is going to be a moment of peace yes. where you can just unwind, be yourself, so no relate babies. with other women. No. <laughs> yeah, we're right. able to, uh, you know, talk to other women and just kind of, um, just kind of decompress and, and separate yourself from um, from life. And we're not going to hold y'all all day on Saturday. So if you want to go home and do some other things, um, probably leaving by 12 or 3. Okay. You know? So we're not gonna, it's packed, but okay. But we we gonna make it happen. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. But well, we are super excited, Crystal. It has yeah. we always have fun when we get together, yes, listen, and we we yes, work together to pull that event out. Woo. And it was amazing, though. Hallelujah. It was yes. amazing, yes. though. And yes. So, a lot of good information was shared. So yes. thanks for And great connections made because Here we go. literally because of us working together. That's right. Met Adila. That's Adila, right. Adila, and it has been. An amazing experience learning about doulas because listen, as a mommy, had I known had then, I what know. I know now, had I know, I feel gypped, yeah, for real, yeah, did not even know what a doula was, yeah. <gasps> Ooh, and another doula just walked in. That's I know right. this doula, she's okay. with the Montgomery Advocacy and Outreach Program, and she's coming on live. I don't care what she says. <laughs> So yes, thank you. All right, so much. thank you for having me, y'all. Yes, Check out that um that she treat. It's yes. gonna be amazing. Yes, yes, yes. Hey Ashley, how are you? Listen, I am broadcasting live. We are answering oh. questions about and talking about doulas, and it would be wonderful if we could talk. Okay. Awesome, y'all. Ashley is a beautiful lady. She's not just my sorrow, but she is a black woman in leadership at Montgomery Advocacy and Outreach, who happens to also be a doula. Ashley Taryn is going to have a seat with us this evening. Welcome, welcome, beautiful and green. Hi, how have things been? Busy. Yes, I can only imagine. So we're here um, on Queen Bee talking oh, about and honoring World Doula Week. And so you are a doula, yes. like along with all of the many other hats that you wear, you are a doula. So in your from your perspective, what is a doula? So from my perspective, a doula is a person that provides emotional and physical support for um, not only women who are pregnant and maybe laboring and during postpartum period, but also for families. So I focus a lot on the family transition, whether that's from couple to family with the first baby, or whether that's uh, adding additional children. Now, you know what? I've asked everyone this, um, who is a practicing doula, like from your perspective, what is a doula? And I think that that's an interesting is an interesting aspect that you focus on family. So how can a doula help a family? Um, and at what point does the family enter the care of a doula? Is this like coming into the care of a doctor? Is it the same thing? Um, so for me, I try and want to work with, if we're going from couple to family, I really try to engage the partner early. So whether that's during our prenatal sessions or getting to know them and what their thoughts are about to do, what they think I'm supposed to do, are there things I have questions about, how can I help them? And then if we're going from like one children to two or two to three, mm -hmm. really kind of talking with the um, the pregnant person and their partner about what they may feel the needs are going to be as they make that transition. So okay. whether that means if I'm doing postpartum um, services for them, whether that means extra time with the kids or 
you know, what are their favorite snacks? Just how yeah. they can, how I can work with them as well and make them feel included, but also if mom needs a break or dad needs a break, you know, how I can get involved with the kids. Well. So now before um, giving birth, I'm just asking similar questions because had I known then what I know now, like my son is 12, right? So 13 years ago, had I known what a doula was, I would have had one. Um, yes. But now that I know, I'm like doula advocate of the world. Like, like, so I'm telling everybody, get a doula, girl, get a doula. So, so now when you think about your role and how many babies have you? Um, so I have four. I've had four doula babies. They're so adorable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you think about the babies that you've um, helped in the, the families, mm -hmm. not just the babies, the families that you've helped, um, what do you think what was the significant difference that your services made, like in regards, especially to stress, because pregnancy can be super stressful. I would say definitely um, for families that have had other children, mm -hmm. of really helping to kind of take some of the stress off about what to do with the other children or kind of being the support for mom as you're trying to navigate feeling like I don't want to, I feel like I'm neglecting my other children by mm -hmm. spending so much time with the baby. Okay. So kind of talking through that okay. and um, also then kind of help to take some of that stress off by like me engaging with the children different things and just the fact that so to kind of make sure they're still tended to and they feel included whether that's you know helping mom get a diaper or get a bottle but involving them in the some of the care of the new baby but then also letting them have the individual time too and then also that means i take baby and mom spends time with other children so whatever is going to make mom um feel more comfortable so now i say it i said it very easily that had i known then what i know now but I want to know about the cost. Um, we had that question come up earlier in the chat about the cost. Um, what is the cost of having a doula? Does in, do insurances cover um, doula services? So not current. Well, I, there are some insurance that will reimburse okay. the, the family for the cost of the doula or the parents. Um, but I would say check with your insurance to see, but that's not a, a widely granted benefit of insurance. So most okay. um, families pay, um, pay the cost of it. So it depends. Um, it can easily range between, you know, six, $800 or more for um, birth foods, because that's usually just like a flat, a flat fee. Okay. And then for most postpartum, you'll be charged by the hour. So that oh, can wow. range from... 25 on up, okay. depending on the services. If it's at overnight, it may be more. So it really depends. Um, overnight? Oh, there are some wow. services that will, over, that will work overnight. Oh, this is wonderful. Y'all, I mean, I need a doula and I'm not trying to have a baby. Look, <laughs> like take some of the stress off. So when I'm thinking about having a baby, can I access doula care prior to so I conception? Would, I would say not necessarily access the care prior to mm -hmm. conception, um, but to be thinking about if you want a doula, what you would look for in the doula, kind of starting to vet some doulas out, kind of talking to people. Because every doula is not for every person. So you have to find the doula that's right for you. So that takes some time and some research. Also, do look up quickly too. Wow. So, you okay. Know, I would say with some time within that first trimester of trying to figure out, you know, your do, but also because they work with you throughout your pregnancy. So supporting you through your 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 visits with your provider and things like that. So you want to get the full benefit um, for for the funds. So the earlier that you can um, look your do look the better. So now, when it comes to, I want to go back because you said the funds that we're paying. I want to go back to this issue of insurances sometimes reimbursing but it is not a guarantee right so how can we advocate for that i know that you are at montgomery advocacy and outreach so so how can we as women how can we as community how do we who do we talk to how do we get this type of coverage because it seems so critical that we would want to decrease um, maternal mortality, right? You know, we want to make sure that women are able to to have to complete their pregnancies and and feel good, right? And not 
face postpartum de depression and especially a, not face it alone. Yes. So how do we advocate for these services? So I was like, definitely reach out to your insurance company. If you have insurance, if they don't provide that, like talk, like kind of put that out. I think this is something that I think would be a good service. Okay. I'm um, talking to your legislators also, you know, reaching out to your state, your state legislators, your state senators to kind of really push the issue and kind of, you know, talk about maternal health and its importance and how this is such a useful benefit. There's research out there that talks about how beneficial doulas are. So the research is there. It is. Um, it's getting the word out so that everybody will understand. I'm telling you, um, a sense of every <laughs> Lord, Adelia came to, um, the she's ready and she looks like me summit that we had that was incorporated into the bridge crossing jubilee and literally just listening to the information from the panel i've gone ahead and like started doing some research and i'm telling you i'm an advocate i don't know that i would be able to be a successful dude <laughs> personally but i am an advocate for the services and it seems like there was some sets that she talked about that the united states literally is one of the countries that does not support really you know so how in the world we find a lot of things behind in the things that help us to live healthier lives but at the top of the list for maternal mortality yeah. and all the other things yeah. and then for black women mm -hmm. The importance of doulas um, and the fact that doulas are not new to Black culture. Um, doulas actually date back to the mother continent mm -hmm. of Africa. And so if we've not really learned the history of these things, we don't think about, you know, well, where did this even come from? Why was it considered important as a part of civilization, right? So when, um, and we, I'm just going to ask you one more question because I know we have so many other experts in the room, which this is an awesome opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have questions, please feel free to chime into the conversation. This is a great opportunity for you to learn more about doulas, D-O-U-L-A-S. That's the plural form, right? Google it, get on board, listen, okay? <laughs> You said book your doula early and that doulas get booked up really quickly. So when it comes to accessing doula care in rural Alabama or in the Black Belt, where do I go? Who do, do I go to the health department? How do I find my doula? So I would probably say social media is going to be your best way. I don't okay. know somewhere where there's like a comprehensive, like doula listing. Um, yes. Well, there are some websites. So Doula Match is one. Oh wow! Um, where okay. You can look up doulas and find out different things about them. I'm not sure if everybody is on doulas. I'm not on Doula Match. Okay. There are a lot of doulas that are. So that's one way. Um, like I say, definitely kind of searching on social media okay. for doulas. Um, but that would be a good way as well. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So find your doula. If you think that Ashley's going to be your match, how can I get in touch with you? Okay. Um, I, um, I take email, Facebook, oh, that's Facebook, so social media. So Facebook, um, Ashley Terrence. Um, I'm on there, send me um, an email, and then um, my email, send me a message. And then my email address for um, doula services is um, Ashley your doula at gmail.com. Okay. Ashley your doula at gmail. Uh -huh. Let me make sure. Look, I spelled it right. Go, child. If you spell it right, they might be able to connect. Here we go. <laughs> All right, wait, 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 Ashley Terry on Facebook. All right, and we're going to email Ashley Your Doula at Gmail if you're interested in learning more, or if you are a mommy who is or a soon to be mommy, right, who wants to get into the care of an awesome doula. Y'all reach out to Miss Ashley Terry. And so now, thank you so very much. This is yes, absolutely. We got to do it again. Absolutely. Yes, yes, let me know. Yes. yes. Thank you. So thank you all for kicking it with us on Queen Bee today. Listen, this evening we are in Montgomery, Alabama. We are at the Rufus Branch of the Montgomery Public Library System at a live event um, being hosted in honor of World Doula Week. And so I'm in the room with babies, I'm in the room with doulas, I'm in the room with healthcare professionals, people 
women who all want other women to have healthy processes. So, um, so the lady who Adelia, I have been talking about her the whole time. She's going to come join us. And we're going to talk about some of the stats that she shared with us during the She's Ready and She Looks Like Me, um, the feminine and reproductive health segment. We had a panel, y'all, rock star right here to just sit down to my left. When I tell you, <laughs> listen, she schooled me. You hear me? <laughs> And so now she and so now she's gonna school all of us. Want to welcome you, Miss Smith. Adina Smith is a doula. Yes. And you also provide breastfeeding consultation. Yes. A lactation specialist, lactation consultant, whatever you like to call it. Listen, now so let's start with breastfeeding and then let's walk back okay. to look. Okay. <laughs> because I'm an advocate. Before I was an advocate for doulas, okay. which you just really birthed that for okay. me. Okay. Um, I would. I am a staunch advocate for breastfeeding. Okay. Wanted to just kind of talk about the importance of breastfeeding for mommies who may be thinking, "I don't know if I want to do that." Why is breastfeeding important? Um, I don't know anybody who knows who doesn't know at least one person that has some form of diabetes, be it type one or type two. Someone who's a cancer patient, be it juvenile, you know, some type of juvenile diagnosis or whatever the case may be. Um, I don't know people who don't know folks with, who you know people that, you know what I'm saying, everybody knows somebody with cancer, diabetes, asthma, um, allergies, uh, all, all the things that you can think of, everything from, and these are things that are impacting both mothers and babies. People think breastfeeding, they say, I can feed my baby for me. Okay, you know, yeah, I know it's the baby thing for the baby but i always push it's the best thing for the mom okay. there's no there's no positive impact for the mother's health when she offers something other than breast milk to her baby i don't care whether that's direct wow. breastfeeding okay. or if it's you know you're pumping your breast milk and giving it to your baby in a bottle it's it, the impact on your health the positive impact and i don't like to say benefits i've yeah. learned to say important i like okay. to think it's important that you don't have cancer okay or that you be pretty sure yes risk. i like to think that it's important that you're not taking off work because your baby has a weak immune system right i like to think that it's important <laughs> you know what i'm saying yes. that you're reducing your risk for uh, hypertension because yes. you're reducing your risk for cardiac events as a woman yes we're not even talking about your baby. Your baby's going to get those benefits for right. sure. We're talking about you, though, when we're talking about osteoporosis, yes. bone disease. Yes. I like to think that that's important and not a benefit. I think it's important that I have strong bones. I don't do everything right, right but okay. let me try to do this. <laughs> <laughs> So we have been joined by the marvelous man, listen, who created Queen B. Monte. Yeah. <laughs> we are talking about breastfeeding, so this might not be. <laughs> Listen, I came on here. I had decided I was going to let you run the show today because I was it was going to be a, a learning experience for me. No. <laughs> but I am so glad you popped on. Monte is the founder for anybody who is brand new to Queen Bee. He is the founder of Queen Bee. He is um, an amazing man who is based in Atlanta. We are in Montgomery. And so we are doing this thing honoring do world doula week listen okay out spread all across the southeast <laughs> i had i'm so sorry i'm late lydia i it was i got off work late and then the traffic in atlanta honey is just crazy so my my car's not a helicopter so i couldn't fly above the mess so I had to and don't you forward. wish it was listen. don't you wish it was in atlanta lord <laughs> 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 And then when I got on, my computer went load. It wanted to restart. I came on and I texted you. I said, Lydia, yeah. I'm on. And I, was, I was saying, Lydia. I couldn't even see here now. I, I saw that you logged in, but I couldn't even see. So I'm like, Lord, I can't bring him on. But honey, when I saw, I said, oh, there he is. <laughs> But I am sitting here. This is Adelia Smith. She is a doula and a lactation counselor. She um, shared so much knowledge with us. Man, um, in March, when we earlier in March, she was in Selma for the She's Ready and She Looks Like Me Summit. She was on the Feminine and Reproductive Health Care 
panel. And when I tell you drop the knowledge, listen, because we got to go back to this. Yeah, got, got to go back to this thing about breastfeeding. Because seriously, it can, I didn't even, some of the stuff that you just said about our health, conserving the health of women. Yes. Um, I knew that there there was this thing about okay, well you lose your weight faster if you um breastfeed. Now I calories a day. See, body see, can't do that. But and, go but see, I, and I heard that, but that was not my experience. I understand. I understand. Hey, that's my story. <laughs> right, right. Possibility. Possibility. <laughs> but I tell you what, it did do for me though, and that was the rest. Right, mm. that piece because even after going back to work with breastfeeding my son, I would come home and I literally would have to make it a safe space for mm -hmm. both of us mm -hmm. and like get in the middle of the bed because it put me to sleep. Yes. Like literally both of us just be knocked out. Like it's like, <laughs> it's like a drug. Yeah. So what it's called is oxytocin. That's what okay. you experience. That's okay. the hormone. Both you and baby experience that peace, as you say. Okay. That rest. Oxytocin is the feel good hormone. So the same thing helps you make a baby. Mm -mm. Same thing help you birth a baby. Okay. Same thing help you breastfeed a baby. Okay. All right now. All right. So mom, <laughs> the, um, something else that you said though was whether you feed the baby directly from the breast or choose to pump. Because I literally I was telling you before we went live that I was having a conversation this past weekend with a young lady, like, oh, you breastfeeding your baby. She's like, Oh, I, I tried it hurt. Mm -mm. Y'all know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, let me sit down. I thought I was a counselor, huh? <laughs> trying to figure out because it really the impact that breastfeeding can have on the baby that's yes. the that's the part like yes. you've literally just re-educated me on breastfeeding as far as women you know the mm -hmm. mommy but the baby that the fact that our babies don't get sick as quickly if they're breastfed that the the enzymes and the composition of breast milk can actually coat the stomach and help even babies who are born who may be born with digestive issues right so in something you said when you were on that panel the breast milk is food and medicine yes ma'am yeah. yes ma'am yes ma'am so pumping versus from the directly, directly from the breast it could pumping be a solution for women who may say it hurts to well, I'm a, I, I like to tell people like this. Breastfeeding is not supposed to hurt. Okay. So we don't want to say, and some people look at it like pumping is not a consolation prize for not lashing your baby. Okay. Right? Pumping can be a part of that. Pumping is a useful tool. Some people exclusively pump, and that is perfectly fine. Okay. Now, if it hurts, it's time to get a consultation because it's not supposed to. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Because if it hurts, it, that means there's some kind of human error or something. Somewhere along the way, ah, is really what okay. that is. Okay. Which really just a matter of positioning the baby correctly, getting the baby latched on because it is okay. not supposed to hurt. I tell people all the time, if something is hurting you, how much longer you gonna keep doing? And that's literally what she said to me. She was like, "I tried it for the first six months. I tried it, and he started hurting me." And I'm like, "What do you mean hurt?" I've like, heard a lot. Of, a lot of women say that. Really? Yeah. And so but now I'm gonna call them. You need to go get the it ain't supposed to hurt. It's not supposed to hurt. And this is what I tell people when I'm when I'm visiting with families, and this is every week, and I say, How does it feel? Mm -hmm. Maybe let's say, uh, it's it's okay, it's not too bad. I say, What's not too bad? I say it's just a little it's okay. And most of the people I see are black. Black women, it's okay to say you are in pain. Yeah. It is okay to say that something hurts. Mm -hmm. It is okay to say that something is uncomfortable. None of those things should exist with breastfeeding. Okay. It should. I'll say it's just it's just a little bit. It's just it's okay. It's just a little bit. It's not bad right now, but it'll get worse. Mm. You will wear down your nipples mm. from rubbing up against the roof of the baby's mouth or whatever the case may be. It's not supposed to hurt. And if it hurts just a little bit, it's gonna hurt just a lot of bit in a few days. Okay. If it hurts just a little bit, say something. Don't be afraid to say, hey, this is uncomfortable. Hey, this hurts. Hey, it doesn't feel right. Say something. We only know what you tell us. You don't have to barrel through pain because you feel like you're supposed to be the strong black woman. Take the cape off, sis. It's okay. Yes. Oh my God. So many times we bear these these healthcare issues and normalize pain because we have this misinformed um, ideal 
mm-hmm. of living up to be, like mm-hmm. you said, a superhuman. Like we have a cape on, and I've actually had a guy friend. Like, do you ever take your cape off? I said, well, you know what? If if I had the, had a man in the house that allowed me to take my cape off, you see what I'm saying? But we have to be able to, like you said, say to whoever our professional is, listen, I'm in pain, right? And how do I change that? Because this is in the best interest of not just me as a mommy, but also my baby. Can I say this? And I can hop back on. I do want to make these few announcements. I know some people are breathing in and out. People of Montgomery County, you all are getting this information first. Montgomery County, Alabama, and any black belt counties in Alabama, if you are interested in becoming a birth doula, we have a training coming up this summer. And guess what? If you are black and you live in those counties, it is at a very, 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 very low cost. Lydia, I will make sure you get the link to register for the information session, uh, which is going to be next week. But we have first doula training coming. We are looking to expand and build capacity yes. in our areas to meet the people's needs who need it the most. So we're removing the financial barriers as much as we possibly can. Um, shout out to the Natural Way Birthing Project in Dallas, Texas, who is helping with that, getting much of that covered. Uh, we're building capacity, y'all. We're going to do this thing one family at a time, one person at a time. So I'm super excited. Um, and we just got some real good partnerships to make it happen this summer. This summer, y'all. This summer. I'm going to make sure Lydia gets the link so anybody can register for the information. And we're going to go from here, okay? Absolutely. So now she's going to hop back on, but Monte and I are going to talk a little while. Listen, thank you so much. Listen, I'm going to share this information with you all because it's so very important. The last doula we just talked to, Miss Terrence, we talked about capacity and she said you got to book your doula early right so now we want to make sure that the black belt is fully equipped to handle the load y'all because mommies do not have to walk this road alone do not have to walk the road alone i hate i, I missed the beginning um because i feel so and i ain't never you know ashamed to say i ain't, i've never heard of a doula you know what i'm saying um I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a man, so I'm not, you know, all into the. Come on, no, look, I'm at a live event, Monte. Don't do that. Oh, no, don't stop talking. Come on, look. No, you fine. <laughs> Ashley said, just... "Hey, Monte, look." Hey, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> I What's know. Up? Good Hi. to see you. Good to see you too. I saw you talking on live. I was trying to jump on, but my, I was having some. It's okay. Maybe next time. And I was like, I can get on Ashley. Yes. Come on, Shelby. Listen. So Monte just said, and welcome. This is Shelby. She's hey, a Shelby. Well. Yes. And she has the most adorable son. He is so handsome. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I just want to take him home with me. So Shelby, you how long have you been a doula? I started after his getting my education stuff after he was born, and I started when he was three months old. Oh, wow. So you're brand new. Yep. This is amazing because Monte just said that he's just learning about doulas. And I'm sure that a lot of folks who are tuning in right now are just learning about doulas. Y'all Google it. It's a whole thing. D-O-U-L-A is a single. Add the S if you want more than one. I'm telling you, do the research. It's out there. The, st- the statistics are there to let us know that having doula care is really critical. It is. So, like, your brand, like, what made you decide to become a doula? Well, I had an amazing doula. Um, okay. I didn't know anything about the birth world, the birth world whatsoever. Okay. And I, just through education, she just kind of opened my eyes to everything. It was like, you know, something just, like, clicked. You're like, oh, my gosh, all of this can happen to me um, if I'm not educated. Like, mm-hmm. all of it, I, I don't have any power if I don't have any education. Right? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm powerless yeah. I'm at the hands of whoever says whatever to me. Yeah. All they have to do is threaten, hey, you're not going to be safe in the hospital or your baby's you know, heart rate is decreasing or whatever. And I don't have any information on it, so right. I'm not going to know any better. 
out at 35 weeks, I transferred my care from a hospital midwife okay. to a home birth midwife, and I had the most amazing home birth. It really? Yes. It was nothing like you see on TV, like in a hospital setting. Or in a home birth setting, like you see, you know, tension and pain. And yeah. My birth was so peaceful. I had my eyes closed. I just kept telling myself, okay, you're one step closer to me. Like, oh, wow. There wasn't, there wasn't pain. It was just like a tight, it was a tightness instead of, you know, contractions. There were surgeries. It's like, just the way you can change your mind to you is just, it's just amazing. Yeah. So perspective changes everything, yeah. right? Um, because what I hear you describing is an experience where your mind, you allowed yourself to not cons- call it pain, yep. but rather that you were welcoming yes. a whole person. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, this is interesting because you said the tightening. So at home now, personal, like real talk. Uh-huh. When I was getting ready to um, have my son, I went for a visit to my um, obstetrician and I told him, I said, listen, I think I want to do a water birth. And he looked me straight in my face and was like, Miss Chapman, don't bring me a notebook. And I said, what? He was like, don't bring me a notebook. Every, yes, because he, and he, he, he said, listen, every mama that comes in here and gives me this big, thick, like three ring binder of pictures that you, and because you read all these articles and this, that, and the third, he said, guess how many of them we use that plan? Exactly. And he said, no, no. Yeah. He said, that's literally not what, you know, that's not what ends up happening. And so, but the mental part yeah, is where, because I thought the water was going to help me have that smooth, you know, and, the, and have the baby have a smooth transition. Now, I gave birth in the state of Georgia, and he told me, he said, off the top, though, I can tell you, I may be able to let you labor in water, but you can't give birth in water. That's not, you know, the law has shifted in that, so I can't allow you to actually birth in water. Y'all, the man wasn't even there when I gave birth. And it was, and it's not even, because I went in, and um, I went in, I actually went to work the day before my son was born. And when I tell you, he was like, oh, you need to go to the hospital tonight. I said, what now? Because I had low fluid. My baby got here the next morning so quickly. The birth was what you said when you talked about the mental decision. It's like, you know, I prayed through the night. Just like that, he was here and it was not a painful experience. Yes, because everybody was telling me these horror stories. Because you had a little birth, Lydia? No, he actually, he just got, I was actually standing up, real talk. Yeah. But. <laughs> Gravity. Yes. It, yeah. Yes. Gravity played a role in it, honey. I was, that, like, seriously, the nurse, you know, she, she's like, okay, I need you to wrap your arms around. And she felt, and she said, girl, he is almost here. Come on, you got two more pushes. Yeah. <laughs> and we got a baby. And I literally was standing up. So, um, I don't know if that was supposed to happen, so y'all don't tell George, but he 12 he now, it don't matter. Like, right? wow. <laughs> but it really, the mindset, right? The the mental shift. So how do doulas impact the mindset of mommy? Yeah, so it starts with, um, you know, we like to get people as early as we can on in their pregnancy and start education, but we can get you day of in labor too. Like, it doesn't matter to most, to most of us. Um, it starts with education. So I'm going to educate you on all of these things. They're not going to be as scary because you know, okay, my body was literally made to do this. And then we send you, we check in, we send you affirmations, we send you hypnobirthing, um, different stuff, just whatever we cater the care to your specific person. That's the thing that the medicalized industry doesn't do, that you're just, you know, a cog in the wheel, you're the next patient. We don't have patients, we have clients. You're your own person. And so we just, we cater the same thing with the birth plans. They see your birth plan as like, oh, she's not going to, she's going to be fussy when I go in there trying to suggest stuff or whatever. But it's really like, hey, I've educated myself on these mm-hmm. things. You're not going to be able to pull this. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna birth labor how I want to labor at birth. 
yeah. yeah. And the yeah. With hydrotherapy, it's awesome to shower a tub, <laughs> just somebody pouring like a cup of water over your belly or your back. Oh wow. You're pain it's it's awesome if you're in the tub you think about it like you when you're floating mm-hmm. it just lifts all that weight so the baby's just free to kind of travel down yeah it's and awesome. see and see that's what i was literally thinking about um didn't even get a chance to do any of it though because he got here so quickly and sometimes it's it is like a law or whatever yeah. or a possible policy mm-hmm. and then sometimes it's the provider isn't educated on natural or um, physiological birth practices so oh, wow. they literally don't know how to catch a baby yeah when it's falling out yeah of right they, they only know if you're in the you know supine like yeah. that position that's the only way they know how to catch a baby which seems and honestly because of my experience it seems so defeatist to actually be in that position because it's like now you're working against gravity. Yeah. Yeah. So what about the doctor doula relationship? Um, how can doulas and doctors work together? Yeah, so it's really interesting in Birmingham. Especially, there's a hospital that they do work with midwives. They have midwives, oh, awesome. they, have, um, they have an OB, a midwife, doulas come in. Um, they just recently got birth pools. So it's like that relationship building and that trust. And then you have other hospitals or um, doctor's offices that aren't really inclined to to share all of that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a some of it's a money making some of it's a they don't know so they're just not gonna interact or it's like a fear thing okay so i don't know what you do um, yeah. i'm gonna just keep doing what i'm doing you know so how can we impact that like what role can we play as community members in making sure that physicians understand the, the role of doulas because yeah. listen they may just be like us just learning about it honey if i had known then what i know now. That's cool. but, okay so what how can we help with that process of making sure so for doulas i think it's just you know one birth at a time you go okay. to those office appointments with your clients you you're at the birth they see how good of a job you're doing and how oh this is really transformative for community members i mean it's just the same thing when you're when you're expecting like yeah. you're you just show up and you discuss with OBs and um and with midwives it's even some, I mean, some you never know you might have a naturally minded OB you might have mm-hmm. a medicalized midwife like you never know what you're gonna get so um, just having conversations and people's minds actually being open to them. I think okay. that's what the most important thing is. Awesome. So, so yeah. if I am looking for a doula uh-huh. and I want to contact Shelby, how do I reach out to you? Okay. I am um, on Facebook okay. as Strong as Mother. Ooh, all right. Services. It's strong. Strong as, as a mother. mother. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear you earlier. I thought it was just a strong ass mother. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So if you are, okay, I'm glad to. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you're a strong so ass you, mother, and you're strong as a mother. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know what? And you, when you said that, it made me think about the commercial. Um, she cooks like a mother. Like the, uh, I think it's like one of the spaghetti sauces or something oh like God. that. Like, yeah, she's at home. She cooks like a mother. Like so strong as a mother. You want to get in touch with Miss Shelby? At Strong as a Mother on Facebook, y'all. Find her. Learn more. Ask questions. Feel empowered. Get strong enough, right? You are a strong, look like Monte says, strong ass mother. Strong ass mother. Yes. Okay. So get your strength, honey. Find your strength and know that you have support in doula so thank yes, you so much for really your time you. absolutely you. see look i told y'all it's just gonna be a conversation <laughs> i love it look people be nervous i don't know why my tight look <laughs> we just having a conversation y'all we talking all about this is different for me lydia it is it's this is different for me too i really i have been learning so 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 much um I had, 
I was trying to like Google some stuff um this morning mm-hmm. and I wasn't looking at the flyers. So I I was typing in Madula. <laughs> not the the Madula Oblongata. I was, that's no, what was coming up. That not, look, and they laughing they hurts like that is not the same. I they said, wait a minute, that ain't what she said. <laughs> so I had to pull the flyer up. I said, Lord, I'm just Oh my God, so embarrassed. <laughs> no, it is doulas, y'all. And you well, gotta got go quiet. Over you, there. If you have not heard of what a doula is, y'all Google it. Y'all Google everything else. Doula, D O U L A. Find out what it is. And you've already heard that if you heard something today, if you are inspired by the idea of even becoming a doula and you live in the Black Belt of Alabama, there will soon be an opportunity for you to go through a training, y'all, a low cost training that can help save lives. Because listen, let me tell y'all something. Because see, Doulas improve birth outcomes. Y'all, when I tell you that doula assisted mothers are four times less likely to have a low birth weight baby, expected mothers who are matched with a doula is two, she is two times less likely to experience a birth complication involving themselves or a baby or their baby, and significantly more likely to breastfeed. There's three life-saving things just right off the top. I'm telling you, if you Google this term doula, find out what a doula is. If you're a if you're a woman who may be contemplating um, pregnancy or you are experiencing pregnancy right now, if you are a family in the midst of a pregnancy, if you are days or hours from delivery. It is not too late, y'all. Every last lady who sat down to talk about the services that she offers as a doula literally was sharing with us the importance of knowing how to reach out to them. Social media. Listen, she's making announcements right now, so I'm trying to be quiet. I'm going to show y'all the audience. An awesome opportunity for the community. So if you seriously y'all, if you are a woman who is experiencing pregnancy. No matter what stage you're in, if you just found out you're pregnant or if you are well into your pregnancy and days away or hours away from delivery, it's not too late for you to have a doula and to help take the stress off. Because, y'all, I've been um, I have a very close friend who was um, her her birth was like really stressful. Right. And it's really, really, really important that we equip each other with the assistance that we need. We've got to form these networks. So um, they're shouting out all the great organizations. We have MAO, Baptist Health, Luke, Selma, and Woo! <laughs> Gift of Life, also in the Alabama Department of Public Health. Uh, them powers here. Listen, so all sorts of organizations coming together to honor World Doula Week. And so this is a phenomenal event. It is being held in Montgomery live at the Rufus Branch of the Montgomery Public Library System. We are located right across from the Montgomery County Health Department. So if you know Mobile Highway, then you know exactly where we are, okay? So we're right at that light, Airport Boulevard. You make the left away from the um, health department if you are headed towards Highway 80. If you are headed um, the other way, towards like Carver High School, that area, Fairview, then you're going to make the right at the light. Oh, make the right at the light, honey. It may save your life. Look. So, more information will come with that. Yes. You're so crazy. So, Monte, how have you been? We're going to continue the interviews. Um, Some of the ladies, um, we definitely need to um, make sure they have some airtime two months from today. Um. 
they're going to be a mommy shower here at the library. <laughs> Y'all, the support network that we have to have is, is you know, it's important. We've got to build community around pregnancy and birth and even surviving miscarriage, right? Because even in spaces where where women um, experience pregnancy but don't experience birth, right? Or experience um, the mommy side of pregnancy. We've got to support our sisters. We've got to support our families. Um, so that's truly, truly important. I wonder if progressive for poor women who are having problems with pregnancy, trying to get pregnant. So Wait, say that again. Women who are trying to get pregnant. Those mm -hmm. women also. You know what? We did actually have um, one of the doulas talk about that. That you can actually, um, I think it depends on the doula when they enter the space with you. But we do have um, one of our first interviews was with um, a doula who, Sarai, who actually will enter the process with you prior to. We have a lot of, a lot of women who are, who, are um, who travel up and down the road to doctor's offices. Like my mom, it took my mom six years to have me, six years and six surgeries. I'm her miracle baby. Um, so, yeah, so I, I've been wondering if they could support for um, women who are experiencing issues like that, who are yeah. in trouble with trying to get pregnant and, uh, you know, having uh, going to all those doctor's appointments and having all those different kind of procedures and all that stuff to experience motherhood. Absolutely. So that's that's a great, and I can actually um, ask, do we have any doulas? Look, I'm asking y'all because you want to know. <laughs> Do we have anyone who's worked with a mommy prior to conception? Fertility. Yeah, fertility doula. Yes. Would you mind coming on camera, girl? <laughs> come on, girl. Come on down. <laughs> ooh, and I look, ooh, wait a minute. Now, when you see her shirt, when you see her shirt, Queen B, look. look. <laughs> yes. What is it? What is it saying? I'm rooting for everybody black. Hey. And we just, hey. It's a whole back. vibe, baby, in here. Okay. Look. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's introduce you to everybody. Hey, What's your name? I'm Chantel Norris. Okay. Hey, I'm with Bama Birth Collective. Okay. I'm a doula. I'm a certified lactation counselor, and I'm a childbirth educator. Awesome. So yep. you do lots of stuff. Okay. I do. So and honey. then I also work with incarcerated moms. I work with the Alabama Prison Birth Project. So mm -hmm. I work with pregnant incarcerated women at Tell Wilder, too. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So lots of questions. Lots uh -huh. and lots of questions. Okay. So now Monte was just talking about um, the importance of perhaps having a doula prior to conception. Um, so fertility doula. Absolutely. Like, what's your role as a fertility doula? What does is, what is a fertility doula do? <laughs> Yay! So a fertility doula is kind of just going to talk to you, see what your goals are. What do you, when do you want to conceive? What is your health like now? Let's talk about diet. Let's talk about, you know, are our cycles regular? How can we monitor when our body is fertile? You know, what's our fertile period? Um, Sometimes I help with birth control, right? Like maybe you oh, don't wow. want to conceive, right? Okay. And so talking about your body's rhythm to help you not conceive if you don't want to conceive right now, you know, with without having to use a hormonal birth control. Okay. I'm walking you through that process. And then, you know, whenever you're ready, I'd, hey, this is what you look for. This is your body's cues to let you know, okay, this is my fertile time, okay? And then if we're having problems, if we're not immediately getting pregnant within those first few months, let's take a look at what's going on and see how we can improve your chances. So now when we think about um, fertility doulas, are these, are, would you say that you see more like moms who are older seeking the care of fertility doulas or are is there like a particular age range, a particular life experience, something that will say, hey, you know what, I may want to talk to a doula about working with me through the fertility process. Right. So I don't have 
I do get some older moms, right? But I surprisingly, I get middle-aged moms, like mid-20s to mid-30s, like maybe they've been on birth control from an early age. Okay. Maybe they have fibroids. Maybe they have endometriosis, you know, certain health issues. Okay. Um, so it's not just a one-size-fits-all. Awesome. Okay. So now um, we go through the fertility process. You've assisted me in helping to know um, when I'm able to be. Right. Um, or conceive. Yes. Uh -huh. When I'm able to conceive. Look, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> so now I'm pregnant. Right. Now, what 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 do you what do I, what does our relationship shift to? OK, so our relationship shifts to me being your best friend really okay. like we're going to talk about everything what kind of birth do you want to have um do you want to have a home birth do you want to have an unmedicated birth do you want to have an epidural you know we're just going to talk through all your options so you know that there are different things that you can choose you don't have to just do what you see on tv you know go to the hospital <laughs> lay on your back push when somebody tell you to push and boom you have a baby um, and I'm going to tell you all of the things that they don't tell you in the hospital. I'm going to tell you, you know, if you're not moving around while you're in labor, you know, that kind of increases your chance for a C-section, which none of us. Wow. Want. Right. So when we do the things that we see on TV, you know, getting the epidural, laying in the bed the whole time, all of that can lead. I'm not going to say it will lead, but, but it, it increases your yeah. likelihood. Wow. Of ending in a cesarean, right? Because most doctors don't want to wait, you know, 20 hours to have a baby. They're like, hey, I'm ready to go home. It's almost dinner time, right? Let's just go and get this baby out. That's the reality of it. Um, and so, but having somebody in your corner to explain it. Yes. To let you know. So now, the li increasing the likelihood. So having a doula decreases the likelihood, or have you run into mommies who actually want to have a cesarean? Like, they want to pick the date of birth and all that kind of stuff. So I have had moms who, when we start out, they... Yeah they do desire that and we just talk about what that means i support a mom for whatever she wants okay. let me leave with that okay. right but when you start realizing you know we say c-section all the time like it's nothing but yeah, that's a major, a major abdominal surgery yes and you got a brand new baby yeah trying to take care of like that's really hard on your body and it's not as cute as it looks the recovery can be pretty tough mm. And, you know, we're just going to talk through all that. And, but I want you to just have all the information. If that's what you still decide that is best for you, go for it. You know what I mean? And there are some times where a C-section is medically necessary, right? Okay. But I just caution when it's not. Okay. So, and so that leads me to another question. You said that there are times when, so what's an example of a time where a C-section may be me medically necessary? Okay. Um, let's say mom starts hemorrhaging. Right. Mm -hmm. um, just okay. bleeding uncontrollably. Yes. That would be an emergency C-section. Okay. Right. Um, if something crazy happens with baby's heart rate, you know, uh -huh. let's say baby's heart rate just drops suddenly mm -hmm. and they can't figure out why that baby needs to come out immediately. Okay. Um, if something is going on with mom, let's say the same thing happens with mom, mom blood pressure bottoms out and she's passing out or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like that would be a time that the baby needs to immediately get out. There okay. are times, you know, that okay. it is an emergency and it's a life saving surgery. So would do, do you come to the hospital? You, do you go to doctor's appointments? Like where does that, because see best friend is best friend, best friend. Do we go to the bathroom together? Like, uh, like, I mean, I have been to the bathroom but, when somebody okay. needs me, but, okay. um, but no, I will go to at least, I try to go to at least one doctor's appointment. You know, COVID okay. has kind of changed things. Yeah. But um, at least, if, even if I'm not able to go in person with you, we talk about what are your concerns? What are things you need to talk with your doctor about? You okay. know, things you might need him to address and helping you have the language okay. to ask what it is that you're curious about. Um, and I'm absolutely going to the hospital with you when you're in labor. I'm staying that whole time until we have a baby, no matter how long it takes. Okay. Um, if it gets super long, I have a backup person who can give me a little relief, you know. Um, but you will not be unattended. I'm there the whole time. 
and then I'm going to come and see about you for postpartum support, making okay. sure that breastfeeding is off to a good start if that's what you choose to do, making sure that you're okay. Postpartum depression is a real thing. Okay. Um, and just making just coming to see about you, making sure your, all your needs are met. You know, is your mom coming to stay with you for a week after you have the baby, or are you completely isolated and alone and you need some more support? You know, those kind of things. So postpartum, um, I think so many times I, I've run into women who have actually experienced postpartum depression and didn't really have the language. Right. Right. We keep hearing that, y'all. We that is a consistent word, trauma and language are two words that we keep hearing in this conversation in these conversations so didn't have the language to say you know i really don't feel good right now you know um what are the are there particular signs or things that we as women after birth can can look for to say okay you know what i may need to seek some extra help here right so you know yourself better than anybody else, but when you're having feelings of really being overwhelmed, you know, maybe feeling really sad, you know, you just got, you can't get out of this funk. Maybe you're having problems with your day-to-day -day activities like, man, I don't even feel like taking a shower. I don't want to brush my teeth. I don't want to comb my hair. You know, like I just want to sit in this bed all day. Those kind of things are, are warning signs that something may be going on and we might need to be seeing so now getting help is it too late um after baby's here for me to to have a doula no we have postpartum doulas. okay so okay wait okay so there's specializations just like in 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 the medical field uh -huh. there's a specialization so fertility doulas pregnancy doulas and postpartum doulas. Uh -huh. interesting can right. they all be one person they can okay. so i do all of those things right. okay. i'm a full spectrum doula so just anything you need a doula to do i kind of show up and do that um and there are some women who you know they only do postpartum you know for whatever reason you know they're scheduling those type of things um and that's what that's their niche you know that's what they do they show up for you they may say okay i'm gonna do eight hours for a day for the first week and then the next week we might do four three days out of the week you know okay. however you the mom and the doula come to an agreement about what works best for her and what her needs are um yeah and we just come and assist you know we help with you know making sure mom is eating making sure baby is eating and mom needs to get some rest which is usually one of the number one things after you've had wow. a baby it's trying to get some rest right and so your doula is gonna tend to the baby's needs so that you can take a nap or you know get some sleep relax a little bit whatever but you don't have to worry about that and you know your baby's taking care so now with that being said we're going to shift to this this other topic that you also work with um and that's breastfeeding because you say get some rest and i already told you all that that was breastfeeding for me was an was a nap time yeah right? i had to make sure i was literally like in the middle of the bed uh -huh. and make sure that he was safe so that i wouldn't you know drop him or sure. anything like that uh -huh. because it's nap time for me for both of us right? right so breastfeeding why do you think that it's important like what are some things that you know um i know that there's scientific evidence you know that indicates that breastfeeding can impact us um adelia did just tell us about some things with mommy that mm -hmm. that it can help what what, from your perspective, have you actually seen breastfeeding? Um, how have you seen that improve, like even relationships with mommies and their babies? Oh, absolutely. So it's bonding for one, like just that closeness, that skin to skin contact. Like it, there's nothing like it. Yeah. Um, also, you said that nap time, right? Yes. That's still bonding, right? <laughs> like you and your baby spending some time together and you're able to actually catch a few extra Z's, right? Yeah. Like you're not up fixing bottles, you're not having to go, you know, whatever in the kitchen. You had a baby's food right there and we're going to lay down and take us a nap. And your body actually releases hormones when you're breastfeeding that make you drowsy. So, I mean, that's just by design. Um, also, you know, just it's something that only the mom can provide, right? So, like, if you got somebody, oh, I'm holding this baby. I'm having, oh, I think it's time for him to eat. Yeah. Give me my baby back. Right. You know, like that, that's a good excuse, right? Yeah. And then it's also, you know, of course, it helps with baby's brain development. It helps, you know, they are not as sick as often, less mm -hmm. ear infections, less asthma, less diabetes um, for the babies. Mm -hmm. And then the moms, you know, we have, when you breastfeed, you have lower chances of breast cancer, mm -hmm. ovarian cancer, uterine cancer. Like, I mean, there's so many benefits. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I think they're underreported, right? Like we don't always hear this, mm -hmm. right? Like it took me getting a certificate in this and going through a training to know all these benefits. It wasn't just common knowledge. So now one of the things um, and why She's Ready and Queen B um, have have emerged is because we focus on HIV prevention, right? Um, and as a part of this, because I think people hear HIV and they're like, wait a minute, what does, you know, what does all of this have to do with that? And it has to do with our total wellness, you know, as Black women so often, and She's Ready points to this, that it is literally um, established as an HIV prevention project for the women ages 25 to 50, particularly because we're the ones who forget about our health, right? Our personal health is on the back burner because we're worried about kids, aging um, relatives who we may be caring for. We're working sometimes two and three jobs. We're we're girlfriend, we're partner, we're in business. You know, we got the side hustle, we got the full time job, we wash the clothes, honey, like baby right here, mopping the hand, you know. And, and our own health Absolutely. gets put on the back burner. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about and honoring World Doula Week as a part of this because we really, really, really value the health, especially um, in bringing down the HIV positivity rate among Black women, right? And making sure that, listen, we tune into our bodies and that we are empowered. We equip ourselves with language, yes. right? So that we can win because we can win. We can win. Um, one of the things that I wanted to, to kind of talk to you about in particular was um, women who may be HIV positive and their ability to breastfeed. Um, there's data out now that indicates that women who are HIV positive but who are virally suppressed, I repeat, virally suppressed, can in fact breastfeed. Absolutely. So talk to us about that. What do you know? Look, I'm so, so glad excited. she smiled when I yes. said it. I'm like, yes, she knows. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am so excited that you knew that because the recommendation used to be that you just, if you have HIV, you can't breastfeed. Right. And that's just it. But that was only the recommendation for the United States. Every other country, it was okay. You know, like the risk of not breastfeeding was because they have cholera and all these mm -hmm. other diseases. You know, the risk was worse if you right. didn't breastfeed. So they said, okay, go ahead and breastfeed. Now they've been doing more research. You know, it take them 15 years to actually publish research, yes. right? And, and give us good research. But that was the latest research that I've seen. And it's, I don't remember what month it came out, but it's so, so new. Um, and most of the practitioners in the hospital are not going to know what you're talking about when you tell them. So you're going to have to print out the article yourself um, so that you just don't have issues. You may have to inform your doctor. Yeah. Um, meaning. But as long as you know you're taking your meds, you have a low load, you're good to go. And so virally suppressed you all. And let's talk about this for just a second. And, and Monte, you can you um, chime in. Hello, HIV educator. Put the hat on, boo. Look. <laughs> Look. When we say virally suppressed, because folks may be unfamiliar with U equals U. Are you, so, are you asking me? Yeah, come on. U equals U, um, undetectable equals untransmittable, which means that if you are, um, I put it in layman's terms, if you're taking your medications like you're supposed to, um, you can't pass HIV on, uh, even if you have uh, unprotected sex. Um, and so that's that's uh, that's major for a lot of people, a lot of couples, a lot of families. Uh, a lot of people are able to have um, healthy sexual relationships and children because of you equals you. So um, that's, that's one of my talking points that I always talk to people on all the time. So yeah, you have it. And that, and it it really is so important. And this this research that is now. Um, pointing to the fact that if women are virally suppressed, that they can breastfeed is so impactful. Um, it is. One of you, our you, you just you just caught me because I didn't I didn't know. You know I've been I've been. You, you know what? Cece, one of our very first um, um, panelists, was actually she breastfed her baby, right? And so yeah. yeah. And so it is. It's real. It's here, y'all. And it's and it's time for us to 
get look equipped with the information Absolutely. like you yep. said it's brand new information we may have to educate our doctors we may have to keep educating them and letting them know like hey this is real i'm definitely if they can educate us about a covid vaccine then we can educate them right about breastfeeding being virally suppressed and living and thriving beyond an HIV positive diagnosis. Exactly like, right. So we are super, super, super excited that you decided to sit down with us because you are such a wealth of information. Listen, she covers your other topic. We talk about sexual wellness, so we're gonna have to get get you back. Listen, she's gonna have to be a panelist, Monte. <laughs> we can bring her back. Let's bring her back. Yes, 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 yes. So now, if I'm looking for a doula, whether I'm in um, searching for a fertility doula, a pregnancy doula, or a postpartum doula, mm-hmm. I can find you. So I am on Facebook and Facebook. Instagram. Um, my Facebook is Chantel Norris. C H A. Girl, wait, you carry me too fast. Sorry. I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to type it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, Facebook is Chantel C H A U N T E L Norris. Okay. And then IG is at Chantel the Doula. All right, Chantel the Doula. Look, we have had strong as a mother. We got. Sh- Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Chantel, the doula. Mm-hmm. We have Ashley, your doula. Y'all, we are equipping you with the information that you need in order to make sure that you have a safe and beautiful pregnancy, delivery, and postpartum process. Again, Queen B is coming to you live. This is, look, we are into. Yes, live and in living color at an in-person event. Meet the doulas at the Rufus branch of the Montgomery Public Library System right here in Montgomery, Alabama, the historic city of Montgomery, Alabama. So we went from history in Selma to come over to Montgomery. Mm, Those 50 miles are real familiar to my history books out there, right? We are making history because we are celebrating Black birth. We are celebrating safe birth and honoring World Doula Week. So make sure you share this information with your friends. Tell a friend to tell a friend, girl, you need a doula. I need a doula and I ain't even trying to have a baby. Look. <laughs> I'm definitely going to tell people. Listen. You heard me. Thank you. So, Monte. This is new, very educational for me because I'm definitely, I got yes. to I gotta speak on myself about a doula. Yes, doula, pronounced D-O-O dash L-A-H. Look. That's my doula. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, listen, we are about an hour and a half into our broadcast, and typically we're just an hour, but we wanted to take some extra time out um, during this particular broadcast to make sure we shared as much valuable information as possible with folks. Um, Next week, we are super, super, super excited that we will return to our traditional format. So you'll see not just four, but five folks on the screen for us next week. Next Tuesday, 6 o'clock Central Standard Time, we will have part two, which will feature Adelia Smith. We're going to bring her back, but we will also have a very, very, very special guest who literally just published a book, y'all. She has an adult coloring book, um, and I'll let her give you the details of why she created this beautiful, beautiful book. Um, but she's going to be on with us live next week and we'll have Kim and of course Monte the creator of Queen Bee and myself we will be right back here join us for part two of this series Queen Bee listen here be safe be prepared be loved on during your delivery process, during your fertility process, during your postpartum process. We want you to queen. We want you to be. So we want to see you next Tuesday, 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. Be here. Be there. All right, y'all have a good night. And Google Doula. It's a thing. <laughs>